Ladies and gentlemen, stop the presses. That's right, I am asking you to go over to your handy-dandy 19th century printing press that you undoubtedly keep right next to your bed and hit stop. There is no time for an intro because today I've got some riveting news about none other than Mr. Lincoln himself. Wait, no, 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 not that Mr. Lincoln. He's great. This Mr. Lincoln. You see, I've been privy to his shenanigans for a long time, and this video is when I finally expose him. First things first, who even is Mr. Lincoln? Well, he's an NPC stork thingy who currently resides in Ravenwood of Wizard City. According to the Wizard 101 wiki, Mr. Lincoln is a registrar for the Ravenwood School of Magical Arts. He's responsible for new student registration, enrollment, training point reimbursement, remember this one, extra credit, graduation, and enlisting students to compete in the Spiral Cup tournament. He himself only gives the quest exchange student and pomp and circumstance, but he is involved in many other quests such as To Ravenwood and Hey Penny. You see a lot of this guy during your low-level days in Wizard City, especially because he always seems to have that incessant bubble on the side of your screen. But aside from his standing world record of most nasally voice in existence, Perhaps he has a present for you? Mr. Lincoln is pretty bland and otherwise forgetful. He's a fairly minor character with mediocre facts about the game who most everyone overlooks, but not me. I've always had my suspicions about our birdie friend, and I've spent months seeking to prove my hunch that Mr. Lincoln is indeed an evil mastermind. So sit back, relax, and grab some popcorn. But not caramel popcorn, because that's just gross. As I take you step by step through my very professional and rigorous investigation. I started by putting together everything we know. That's when I realized we don't know. We don't have any substantial information on Mr. Lincoln other than the limited wiki page I referenced earlier and a few other scattered posts. We don't have a backstory, credentials, or even a first name. I scoured the internet, but no amount of research could fix that. The only new details I could find on him was a short page introducing each Ravenwood faculty member. Mr. Lincoln's section yielded nothing useful, except for confirming that he didn't share his first name. I now knew that I had to find out any and all information for myself. I donned my most inconspicuous outfit, mounted my most unassuming mount, and set out through Wizard City. I began by heading for Ravenwood. I wasn't sure what I was looking for exactly, but I knew his region of employment was a good place to start. I stealthily made my way past our suspect, and boom, I was in. From there, I started poking my way around and visiting each professor. Where better to get dirt than from a co-worker? But I knew I couldn't just bust in and directly ask them about Mr. Lincoln. That would certainly ruffle some feathers. Get it? Because Mr. Lincoln has feathers? Hee <laughs> hee! Instead, I casually made small talk with each professor as I snooped around, even going as far as to visit good old Dwargy down in Nightside. None of them were particularly chatty, but that didn't matter. I had what I'd come for. I thanked each professor for their time, especially Miss Falmea, and scampered off to put together the theory that was forming in my head. Now, you're probably thinking that we learned nothing from that, but... Let's roll the footage once again, shall we? Stop. Zoom in a little. Perfect. A name tag, with the professor's first and last name. Each professor is required to display their full name above their heads, with the exception of Dorgan, who is relieved of any suspicion because he's obviously a stand-up guy. I mean, look at him. When we turn our attention back to Mr. Lincoln, however, we see that that's that... that... We see that that's not the case. His name tag is just Mr. Lincoln. This brings me to my theory that Mr. Lincoln is an alias. I know it's far-fetched, but hear me out. Because it's a fake name, 
there is no first name to give. His persona is simply Mr. Lincoln. It's a broad enough name that when searched online, the results will come back about other people. And that doesn't seem all that suspicious because it's such a common name. He counts on the fact that students won't take the time to look him up specifically, if they take the time to look him up at all. I mean, have any of you ever cared about your teachers enough to look them up? I know I haven't. <laughs> in fact, I take pride in knowing as little about my teachers as humanly possible. Besides, Mr. Lincoln, Lincoln. just sounds scholarly and professor-like. Lincoln. No student would second-guess calling Lincoln. a school official by Lincoln. that name. Lincoln. Put him on the faculty list with a few useless facts to make him appear more personable, and voila, he's fooled the entirety of Ravenwood. But the golden question is, why? there were still some very important pieces missing to this puzzle. I decided I would try Mr. Lincoln's boss and the headmaster himself, Merle Ambrose, for more details. I bounced, I, I mean, quietly traveled, on over to his office and tried a similar tactic as with the professors. I found him grouchy and uncooperative. It would be futile to try and snoop in here, as he refused to take his unblinking gaze off of me. Frustrated, I had no choice but to leave. I had a strong feeling about that office and knew I needed to look around. I snuck around back and pulled a favor with my good buddy Gamma to let me in. I hid behind a desk and my eyes were immediately drawn to the mountain of paperwork stacked in the corner. Wait a minute! I quickly took my thoughts and left once again before I was noticed. Why would Merle have so much paperwork if he had a registrar on team? If we look back to our wiki page from earlier, it clearly states that Mr. Lincoln is in charge of student registration and enrollment, as well as a few other things that would need paperwork. According to Merriam-Webster, the official definition also confirms that a registrar is indeed a keeper of records. That's when a vague memory surfaced. Penny dreadful. Didn't we have to complete a quest regarding her, Mr. Lincoln, and her paperwork? I raced off to go speak with her in Dark Cave. After I arrived, we caught up with each other for a while. Well, I did most of the talking. People here really aren't verbose. Eventually, being around her refreshed my memory of that old quest from my early wizard days. I actually mentioned it early in this video. The quest was called Hey Penny. I remembered that her enrollment application had suspiciously gone missing, and the administration implied that it had to do with Malastare turning evil. Yeah, okay, Mr. Lincoln, the guy with plans of world domination came back just to mess up your paperwork. Anyway, Penny then asked us to speak with Mr. Lincoln on her behalf. He said he couldn't find her paperwork, suggesting that she either didn't submit it or it was locked up tight because he and Ambrose care about protecting personal information. Then he sends us to go look for it in Merle's office. Wait. Why would he send us, a fellow student, to go pick up another fellow student's classified documents? It's extremely unprofessional for him to even let us get involved, let alone ask us to go find it for him. We finish off the quest with finding Penny's papers in Merle's unorganized desk, a lack of paperwork organization that a certain registrar would be in charge of fixing. It was at this point that another part of this mystery became clear to me. Mr. Lincoln, or whatever his name is, isn't even a real registrar. I mean, how else could we explain the disarray of paperwork all over Wizard City, his disregard for protocol and privacy, and his utter lack of skill at his own profession, which, upon another quick Google search, is revealed to require at least a bachelor's degree of training? Right about now, you all may be wondering, Dragon, why would someone fake an entire identity just to fake a job that probably doesn't pay very much? That's how you guys all sound, right? <clears throat> but my answer to that question was, I didn't know, and I needed to find out. If I wanted to reveal Mr. Lincoln's true intentions, I knew I had to get closer to him. Unfortunately, however, my trusty investigation outfit had most likely been compromised. I needed to go undercover. Aha! The spell is working! As a new student! I figured there was no better way to fly under the radar than to disguise myself as a harmless, fresh-faced wizard just arriving at the spiral. I carefully selected a disguise that couldn't possibly be traced back to me, and picked a special, unique name. 
It was then that I re-entered the wizarding world all over again. Now, it was imperative that I maintained my secret identity of being a clueless student, and therefore I ended up stuck in Merle's tutorial. The sky went boom boom, Malastair showed up, the headmaster put me in direct danger, Oh my, you're hurt! And I learned to talk. It wasn't until the last few moments of our exchange that something pertinent to our investigation stood out to me. The headmaster claimed we were required to part ways because he had, and I quote, a mountain of duties to attend to, including readying my enrollment. Any legitimate registrar would be handling such a task already. This just solidified that Mr. Lincoln was indeed a fraud. The why we were searching for was still out there. I continued following Merley's instructions, which ended me up in Unicorn Way. Unicorn Way? More like Harm's Way, because that's where I was once again. I mean, seriously, dude, I'm surprised any of your students survived the first week. I ran errands for people, purposely ignored eavesdropping lady, enjoyed the pirate's pun, Ye got guts, little wizard. More than us, to be sure. Opened some wooden chests, got them out so I could run people's errands faster, and came across a glitch where the spell selection sigil never left in combat. Finally, I completed the area and ultimately ended up back in that infamous office. It was here that I was directed to meet the man of the hour, Mr. LinkedIn. I zoomed to Ravenwood on my happy little broomstick and was soon face to face with Mr. Lincoln. My impeccable disguise held up as he introduced himself and didn't seem to recognize me. He pretended to be working on my enrollment by asking me a bogus question or two. You know how it is. Schools won't let you attend if you have allergies. Ew. I then was whisked off to meet my professor, Dahlia Falmea. I wasn't mad about that. I trained Fire Elf and took my exit. I found myself back at Mr. Lincoln, but I knew I wouldn't be able to pry without blowing my cover. It turns out... I didn't even have to worry about it. What Mr. Lincoln said next was when it all clicked together in my mind. You've met your professor. Great. You can train spells in your school for free. But to learn other school spells, you must spend training points. Here, I'll give you one now. Use it to start training a secondary school. And if you change your mind later, see me to buy back training points. He moved on to his dorm room spiel like it was no big deal, but I knew otherwise. I didn't listen to another word he said and dashed out of Ravenwood. Ladies and gentlemen, that bit of dialogue revealed to us the very answer we are looking for. Mr. Lincoln is going through all this trouble to fake his identity and his job because he is running a training point scam. Let me explain. Mr. Lincoln mentions training a secondary school. For those of you who may not know, that is when a wizard chooses another school to master and spend all their training points in. Most wiz veterans will tell you that a secondary school becomes irrelevant after about level 50, even with a mastery amulet, which is a necklace a player can purchase for crowns to allow use of power pips for another school besides their main. Investing in a second school is almost guaranteed to be a waste of training points in the long run. It's encouraged that you use instead the universally deemed more effective method of spending your precious points on spells such as Tower Shield, Faint, or any of the Astral spells. Basically, Mr. Lincoln is encouraging new and unsuspecting wizards down a bad path of fruitlessly spending their training points. Inevitably, the young wizard will find themselves looking around with no more training points to their name and with very little to show for it. If only there was someone who could give them a second chance. Enter stage left, Mr. Lincoln. You see where I'm going with this? He is the only one responsible for reimbursing training points in the entirety of this spiral, and he charges a pretty hefty sum of that sweet, sweet whiz dough to do so. The cost is 350 crowns per training point. Maybe you're thinking that isn't a whole lot, but just remember that number goes up with every training point you get. If I were to reimburse my training points right now, it would cost me 3,850 crowns. I should address the fact that Mr. Lincoln will refund all points for free if three or less training points are spent. My counter for this apparent kindness is simple. It's a tactic to gain trust. I file the member benefit of free training point buyback under the same category. By appearing to seem reasonable and generous, Mr. Lincoln is alleviating suspicion of his scheme. Besides, these acts don't seem so truly benevolent of him when you look a little closer. A wizard is not allowed to reimburse training points until level 12, 
by which time they've already received their maximum of three points allowed for free reimbursement and been encouraged to spend them. A secondary stool is still useful at this point, and a wizard has oftentimes already used their three training points and then some before they realize their mistake. The free buyback benefit is only available for members and isn't very frequent in itself. Are you still not convinced? Let me share a fishy experience of mine that I had previously marked off as bad timing. On December 8th of 2020, I bought a small amount of crowns in order to buy back my training points on all my characters. I totally didn't play with secondary schools on all my wizards up until last year, so I really don't know why you would say that. The odd part is that on December 10th of 2020, just two days later after making my purchase, Mr. Lincoln enacted the aforementioned member benefit of free training point buyback. That's no coincidence. He waited until I spent the crowns before deciding to be all quote-unquote generous. Is it such a thing that I just got impatient and didn't wait long enough for the member benefit? <laughs> no. It was definitely a scam. Thank you so much for watching everyone as my brain slowly deteriorated and I accused a completely fictional character of increasingly crazy things. If you like this video, please make sure to gush in the comments so I get a really big head. But for real, thank you. YouTube has been a huge dream of mine for a long time and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be here. I plan to do lots on this channel, so please leave any suggestions for different games or content that you'd like me to play or cover. Um, I am super bad at ending interactions with any sort of grace, so bye-bye everyone!